Welcome to the Utah Stories podcast. Uh, today's guest is Jerusha Hess. Uh, she's a very accomplished director and screenwriter, working on such films as Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre, not to mention her most recent Oscar nomination. Uh, we are so excited for Jerusha to be on the show today. Welcome, Jerusha. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Um, I want to talk first about your short film that is nominated for an Oscar, 95 Senses. Um, I saw your film and I was really struck by the animation and the interweaving of the senses. Mm. Um, how did this project get sent your way? Yeah, so it started as this nonprofit project via the Salt Lake Film Society. Mm -hmm. During COVID, they kind of needed to pivot because no one was in theaters. And so they started this program called MAST, which the idea is to take up and coming animators and pair them with directors and writers who had worked in the industry already. Mm -hmm. So we were pitched that idea and we loved it. We were like, yes, please. We mm -hmm. love working with new voices. We love young animators. We had been working on our animated movie for Netflix called Thelma the Unicorn yep. alongside the time. So we were just really passionate about animation. So we were pitched this. We said, yes, we would love to. And then our buddies, Hubble, Palmer, and Chris Bowman, they wrote this gorgeous script and we were we were blown away yeah. it's so stunning and and they they were the ones that created this movie around the five senses because they knew there was going to be five to six animation teams mm -hmm. and so they were like okay we want it to be in chapters so that you can jump from one animation style to the next and so they came up with this really brilliant method yeah, I, I saw all of the animated short films this year, and that one was definitely my favorite. Ah! Just really loved it, especially the, the documentary and the animated this year were really strong. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The other the other Oscar-nommed animated shorts are so gorgeous, and they're so um, – you know, there's no Pixar movie this year. Yeah. There's no Disney movie. And so they're really these beautiful, poignant – pieces that feel like they're very important and for adults and wholly original too like, yes yeah, yes important. it's very powerful and i'm so like Whoa. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming we just are silly <laughs> yeah so what's the process like um you know going through the oscar nominations leading up to the oscars i'm sure you're going through a media blitz right yeah. now it's like yeah so so the whole thing started you know we make the movie and then it got into festivals and our writer chris bowman he was really smart about hey let's get into these oscar qualifying festivals and i you know i don't know anything about this yeah. and and so you know he and the producer were able to really strategize where to submit it mm -hmm. and then it played at all these festivals that i'd never heard of yep. and it played like gangbusters mm -hmm. and it was just so well received and pretty soon it qualified for the long list yep. and we were like oh we didn't, really, step, yep. we didn't really do anything <laughs> we just kind of like wow what an honor yeah and then it was qualified for the short list and that's when we really buckled down and like started talking about uh just what's the next process do we need to get some more funding mm -hmm. to to get a real press push um i don't know where that money came from but somehow yeah. we got a publicist and we've been we've been able to you know get it out there yeah. but a lot of it's very organic like Jared and I will just send it to buddies in the industry mm -hmm. and say, check out this movie. And I think they have a moment like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll watch your little short film. And then they watch it knowing us and knowing what our body of work is. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just a moment of what you guys did this. And so I, I people are very charmed and touched and moved. And because the movie is great and the script was great and Tim Blake Nelson was great and all of those oh, elements. One of my but favorites. I, <laughs> but I think there's also a part of it where. They're like, we didn't expect that from you guys. We mm -hmm. didn't expect that from the Napoleon Dynamite people. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. there is a there is a common theme, I think, as well. Of, common thread, yeah. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. something, right? We really love our unsung heroes and, I don't know. Great. I can't have you on the podcast and not talk about Napoleon Dynamite. Ah, okay. Uh, we just had the 20th anniversary for yep. Napoleon Dynamite at Sundance. We saw the dancers all over Park City, and that was so cool. That was really cool to see. Um, talk about the culmination of your first feature, um, what the process was like with your husband, Jared, for the short Palooka. Yeah, cool. And, um, you know, how from two years later, from Palooka to Napoleon Dynamite, how do you get the cast, the funding, all that whole process? Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, so we were students at BYU and you just write your brains out while you're a student yeah. because those are your assignments. And so we had lots of short films that we wrote and directed. And, you know, that's the that's the dream when you have free actors and free supplies. Yep. <laughs> and so Peluca was a short Jared wrote. And it's all based, you know, our early stuff is all based on true things. And I and I think we must have had a really good professor in Daryl Larson who, who encouraged us to write stories about ourselves, right? And so Peluca was a little story from Jared's high school of a friend who shaved his head. <laughs> you know, there's just little pieces of here and there. Mm -hmm. And then this awkward character, Napoleon, was just really an amalgamation of a lot of funny brothers that we have. We both yeah. come from big Mormon families. And we, um, yeah, so that film, we made that. I think my brother produced it. He gave us like 300 bucks or something because he had a car accident oh, and got, like, <laughs> got a little settlement. Yeah. So That's we great. made that little movie and we uh, submitted it to Slam Dance mm -hmm. and it it got a lot of really positive feedback at Slam Dance and that's how we got funding via a friend Jeremy Kuhn at yep. at at BYU mm -hmm. and to make the feature version. And John Heater was also at BYU? John Heater was just a buddy at BYU. It was mm -hmm. just, you know, he was so, John was such an enigma to us. We didn't have any classes with him, but he had a twin and they were always <laughs> going to the freaking club omni mm -hmm. some dance club they were really cool yeah boys you would never know that from napoleon right but mm -hmm. they were really cool boys and we knew he was kind of a dancer at heart and so we just <laughs> you had to incorporate that yeah. yes when he danced in that field during peluca it was a game changer mm -hmm. well that's great we were just actually at sundance uh this year covering it for utah stories um, having premiered a couple of films there, um, what does Sundance mean to you? And do you think it still has the same impact as the launching pad for new filmmakers? Oh my goodness. Sundance to us is home forever. We are so grateful. Um, we, we just, it, it's everything to mm -hmm. get your movie premiered. There is everything. And even the third movie in, it still means so much to us. You know, we're indie filmmakers at heart and yeah. it's what we always want to do. If we didn't have to pay the bills and put right. kids in college. It's all we would do. Yeah. So um, Sundance is very important. I think, yes, things are shifting and you can view at home and, and everything maybe looks a little different, but I still think uh, festivals are the way to to launch indie filmmakers and up and coming filmmakers. Yeah, and last year we saw Celine Song there with Past Lives. It's just continually See? contributing to that pipeline. It does, is, yeah. it does. It's a very cool and exciting that whole two weeks, you're like, yeah. what am I going to see? And to see it the first time and have that director and the gratitude, you just see that gratitude. Yeah. It's a very cool experience. And I, I love going to, I mean, we went to tons of, of press screenings, but I love going to the public screenings because you get that audience experience that mm -hmm. I don't get at the yeah. Megaplex or yeah. at other theaters, you know? Yeah. So it just, even just once a year, just having that communal experience is yeah. really important. Yes. We still love movies and a brick and mortar yeah. theater. We love it. I think for that reason to, mm -hmm. to view it and to, and to not have a device in your hand yeah, and to have, it is communally just a fun time. Yeah. Um, so yes, we really believe in going to the movies often. Yep. And I, the one big uh, public screening I saw this year was Thelma. So I got to see June Squibb oh, there cool. and it was just, it was, it was a, such a fun a special experience. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah, it was great. Oh, well done. So, um, how has independent cinema, because you just mentioned that, mm. changed in the 20 plus years since you've been doing it? Yeah, I think um, I think there's waves, right? There's waves where uh, production companies are making indie movies. And then, you know, those big those big giant tent pole movies were the most important. And so indie movies got maybe a little cheaper. Or, you know, I think there's I, I'm not the producer, so I can't speak to. Um, the exactitude of this, but I feel like the indie filmmaker like mindset, maybe it shifted a little to TV for mm -hmm. a second and maybe it's coming back to movies. Yep. I, but I think it's going to always exist. I think we want new voices, new stories forever and ever. So that's great. Yeah. And, and I, and I think audiences, you know, we love, we love a big action film, but I think audiences do crave different and yeah. get tired of the same. And I, I know personally, I like to see like the smaller budget films succeed. Totally. Like Napoleon Dynamite was like, what, $400,000 totally. budget. So yeah, that's really great to see. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and we know that Kevin Costner just recently opened a studio down in St. George. Oh, I didn't even know um, this. Well, Tell me all about you, there it. There you go. Well um, done. Well, he just he just uh, debuted the trailer for Horizon. I don't know if you uh, saw that. His, his it's going to be like a three-part. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we were just down in Moab last week talking that's to cool. the film commission, and oh, they were telling us cool. all about it. That's um, very cool. But Utah Film Studios, especially in, in Park City as well, mm -hmm. um, they've, they've housed many pro projects, including Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that tax incentives are the most competitive in Utah. But do you think Utah is a state that is welcoming to filmmakers? Oh, absolutely. I think our actual crew are amazing here. Yeah. And I and I think um, that's a lovely part of shooting in Utah, other than the diverse geography. Mm -hmm. and But I think our crew is really solid and and scrappy i think we're a scrappy crew here yeah uh, we've worked in crew positions all through college we were on crew positions in utah as as first and second acs so um yeah i think utah is very welcoming i think we have a long history of making movies here mm -hmm. the tax incentive again that's going to come and go in every state and yep. we just have to keep lobbying for you know yeah. money to come here because it, it creates a lot of jobs yeah I made my first uh, short last year, actually, and um, I was I would just worked with students from the U, ah, and I was just well struck done. by like how passionate they were and how like even just professional they were. It was just it was a really great experience. Well done. So this is I'm like such a fan of, of short films. Suddenly, you know, you think that short films are just for students, yeah. but you see what Wes Anderson is doing. I was just going to mention that. Yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. and it's and it's a it's just a medium that I think we all kind yeah. of are hungry for. Like, yes, let's watch a. Let's watch something that's self-contained. Yeah, and I'll go back and I'll watch like Damien Chazelle's short films and Barry Jenkins short films see? when he was at Florida State, and like it's just really exciting to see like how these filmmakers started and then like what they took from uh, their earlier stuff, like yeah. even like Spike Lee's earlier yeah. stuff, it's, like, very student film yes. oriented. So yeah, cool. that's great. Um, and then just want to wrap up uh, with your next project, Film of the Unicorn, which you alluded to earlier. Um, it comes out in May on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you can tell us about that film? Oh, yes. It's based on a book by Aaron Blaby, and he's so funny. Check out his other books. He's he's done a lot of series. He did the uh, Bad Guys series. Oh, yeah. He's made into a movie a couple yep. of years ago. Um, but this is a darling movie about a little pony that wishes she could be a performer and Great. doesn't feel like she looks the part. Mm -hmm. So that's in a, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Brittany Howard plays... The pony. I saw Will Forte's. Book, Will Forte plays her best friend. Mm -hmm. Jermaine Clement is the bad oh, guy. Oh, I love Jermaine it's Clement. It's such a fun cast. Flight of the Concords. Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Um, uh, Brett McKenzie did a lot of the songs for it. Wrote oh, really? The songs, That's so amazing. I know. It's That's one of my be, favorite shows. <laughs> it's just going to be such a fun time. Yeah. And... And it has a lot of heart and the songs are gorgeous. And, and I saw John Heater is going to be involved. John Heater yeah. has a role. See, I forget how many people. And and Chandrella Avery, um, La Fonda, she, <laughs> has a, La Fonda. she has a role. It's, just, it's so fun to bring back our friends and, and our people from from long ago. And Yeah, I just rewatched Napoleon Dynamite last night. So. <laughs> Good on you. Good yeah, on I was you. trying to be as prepared ah, as possible. Good for, on you. This, I so. watched it with my daughter, my 11-year-old, for the first time during Sundance. Oh, I really? think she had seen it like peripherally, right? But not yeah. as a sentient human, mm -hmm. I think. So she sat there and there was a lot of like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like of course, funny little like, asides yeah. to me. But she was giggling the whole time and really I think she enjoyed it and but also laughed at us like, what were you doing? Yeah, where did this, some of this dialogue come from? <laughs> yeah, but you get into the, I think mostly for these young kids, like the rhythm and the pace is new for them yeah. because it's so slow and there's so many static shots of yeah. just like breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's funny cause like I'll go to the Megaplex. Um, I live down in Lehigh. So uh -huh. like the Thanksgiving point one. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they always play the, do the chickens have large ah, talents? Like that's they, funny. So it's, it's cool to see that. That's still. funny. Uh, well, thank you so much yeah, for coming on Jerusha. Uh, again, Jerusha short film, 95 senses uh, was nominated for best animated short film. Jerusha, we want to wish you the best of luck at the Oscars. Thank you so much. It's going to be a freaking whirlwind. Yep. Thank you, man. Well, thanks again for tuning into the Utah Stories podcast, and we'll see you next time.